Hello everyone, in this video session we are going to focus on a brief summary of chapter 1 philosophical foundations of research and first of all let's have a look at the uh, outcomes of our chapter after reading that chapter you will be able to define basic concepts in philosophy of research you will discriminate a priori proposition from a, a posteriori proposition knowledge you will compare inductivist methodology to deductivist methodology you will be able to define Kuhnian terminology such as paradigm and paradigm shift and finally you will be able to discuss the differences between the positivist quantitative and post positivist qualitative approach first of all let's have a quick look on two important terms in our chapter which are epistemology and ontology as you see there are two main differences between these two concepts epistemology focuses on the study of knowledge it is called as the philosophy of knowledge on the other hand ontology is interested in the existence and reality uh, of items and beings for example if you want to give an example for example, we can have a look at apple and ontology is interested in the nature of an apple substance. I mean, uh, what, it is, what it is made of, what is its reality and what is its existence. The main focus is on the reality and existence of an apple. On the other hand, epistemology is interested in how we get the knowledge of an apple where do we know that this is an apple so there are two basic differences between epistemology and ontology these do these two terms are very important because for example epistemological concerns are important for understanding the nature of the scientific practice and the outcome of such practices and in epistemology we have two main positions these are called as rationalism and empiricism when we look at the rationalism, we see that it focuses on innate ideas. According to rationalist perspective, knowledge is a priori. What does that mean? That means we do not gain our knowledge from senses or experiences, but they already exist in our mind. I mean, they are prior to the experiences. But when we look at the empiricism, they believe that we experience everything and experience, especially the sense experience, is the only source of human knowledge. For this reason, they think that knowledge is a posteriori. That means knowledge comes from experience and experience is the only source of knowledge. As you see, there are basic differences between these two epistemological perspectives. When we look at the ontological positions, we see that there are two important concepts such as realism and idealism and they significantly differ from each other. For example, realism think that there is an important correspondence between the external reality and the human perception. But on the other hand, when we look at idealism, the scientists, the scholars think that there is no material or no physical external world that is the basis of our reality. I mean, uh, they do not believe the materialistic perspective. They think that we just receive, we have ideas in our minds and this is how we shape the knowledge of our world. So in terms of the ontological positions, you see there are differences between realism and idealism. And based on these two perspectives, of course, we shape our perspectives towards science. And for this reason, two main differences, two main different perspectives occur in the methods of science. These are called inductivism and deductivism. According to inductivist perspective, the starting point in science, science is the observation of singular facts, events and happenings. And according to inductivist perspective, the observations must be theory free because they believe in a bottom up fashion from singular cases to generalization. And these singular facts are then generalized to cover all cases. This is called inductive generalization. And remember that inductivism has a bottom up fashion. On the other hand, we have the deductivism it is also called as the hypothetical deduction and 
It was developed as a response to the problems of inductivism. According to them, we do not need observations. Theories can be hypothetically and imaginatively produced. And based on these theories, based on these laws, scientists can try to deduce some hypothesis. For this reason, we can call deductivism as a top-down approach and as a top-down model. And based on these two perspectives, of course, we create a paradigm theory. That means these inductivism and uh, deductivism presents an orderly process for science. And these lead to the word, the concept paradigm, which is divine, defined as a worldview or an intellectual or theoretical framework that provides guidance for the engagement of the community scientists with their phenomena of interest. To clarify it, paradigm provides the scientists with some basic concepts, problems, and example cases. And with the help of paradigm, we create some basic exceptions regarding the nature of knowledge, the nature of world, and paradigms guide the scientists regarding the entire process of science. And when we focus more deeply on the word paradigm, we come up with the Kuhn's several key features of science. According to him, we need empirical observations, generation and testing of hypotheses, construction and testing of theories, and science and scientific processes should aim to explain, predict, and possibly control the phenomena in order to improve the living conditions of human beings. And at this point, he proposes two important terms. These are theory and hypothesis. We can define theory as explanatory systems or generalizations usually expressed in the form of universal laws. And we can define hypothesis as predictions or educated guesses about a certain phenomenon that are derived from a theory. And at that point, Kuhn defines and describes the uh, generation of science with a figure, as you see. Here, we have, first of all, the normal science. This is called as a consensus among the community of scientists. They have common beliefs, they have common principles, they believe some certain things. Then one day an anomaly happens, which means the deviation of the paradigm induced expectations. They found they find they encounter something that is contrary to normal science. And at this point, when this happens, the field enters into a phase of crisis and the community starts to question the basics of their current theory. When they meet, when they encounter with an anomaly, a crisis happens and they start to question their principles of the current theory. And they, at the same time, they begin some search for new ideas, for new ways and approaches and problems. And again, over time, some groups of scientists, some groups of scholars come up with some more fresh ideas, some new ideas, and they start to embrace them as principles. And at this point, a paradigm shift takes place as the previously accepted theory is replaced by a new theory. And this cycle refers to the spiral cycle of science, according to Kuhn. And when we have a look at the social sciences, based on these philosophical perspectives, we have two important paradigms. The first one is the quantitative positivist paradigm. Social sciences have been heavily based on positivism and its quantitative approach. And according to this positivist paradigm, scientific knowledge must be based on empirically testable data. We need to test everything and these everything needs to be based on these empirical elements and testable data. So all these data and all the scientific processes should be empirically verifiable. And according to positivists, empirical observations must be generalized and expressed as universal laws. There must be a unity of method across all sciences, and there is no difference between natural sciences or social sciences. Everything should be strictly empirical and testable. 
This is what positivists and positivist scientists believe. And of course, in time, there were some criticism towards quantitative paradigm because they thought that everything, even reality, was measurable, quantifiable, and statistically expressible, which in fact uh, was a kind of mistake. And they even approached social reality as if it was dependent on the human beings from social, cultural, and historical processes. I mean, uh, the positivists, the positivist scientists did not take into account the issue of meaning, which is in social sciences at the center of social life. And as we know, the individuals attach meaning to the phenomenon. And since positivist scientists did not pay the necessary attention to the meaning and regarded everything as measurable and statistically expressible, quantitative paradigm was criticized in social sciences. And at the end of this criticism, scientists came up with a new paradigm called qualitative interpretive paradigm. And the scientists in social sciences expected to be part of the social world. I mean, they wanted to have a first-hand experience. They wanted to interpret the individuals and they wanted to make some comments on the meanings attached by those individuals. And finally, they came up with an interpretive paradigm. And this position, this interpretive position was also known as constructivism or social constructivism because of its focus on reflecting the constructed meaning in social sciences. And this qualitative interpretive paradigm significantly differed from the positivist paradigm in terms of the methods they use. For example, in positivist paradigm, they used experiments, everything was empirical, and they used tests. But here in qualitative paradigm, the methods changed and included having conversation with people, interviewing them, observing them in their natural places, and even collecting some document analysis to analyze both in terms of the philosophy and in terms of the methods to collect data, qualitative interpretive paradigm significantly differed from the positivist paradigm. As you see in this video, we briefly focus on the differences between uh, qualitative and quantitative paradigms in social sciences. We also touched upon the development of science and we also focused on some basic terms in the philosophy of science. Of course, in order to get a deeper knowledge, you need to have a look at the chapter in detail.